Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. We are back with day three of our spring summer Bible German camp. Let's pray, we'll chat, we'll get started. Okay, dear Lord, thank you so much for today. Lord, thank you for this time with my dear sweet friends here. I pray right now that what we are going to study, that you will bless this time together, that you will challenge us to focus on you. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you so much for all of your amazing promises in your word. And I pray that as we go through this study, we can more and more begin or more and more continue um, knowing you better. Lord, right now, I ask for each and every person listening today that their hearts would be open to what you would have them to learn. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <coughs> um. I have been a little under the weather since yesterday. <laughs> My husband came home with some kind of bug, and um, he he's pretty much over it, but I am still kind of struggling with it. I've got my electrolytes here. Um, I think I'm okay. I think it's getting better, and it could have been much worse, so I'm very thankful. But I'm just like, wow. Um, like I say, guys, we need to be in prayer for this week. There is so much that comes under attack, and so we just have to trust the Father. Um, right now, I it's um, about 5.30. It's taken me until now to feel like I could come and be with you guys, um, so forgive me. And yesterday, it was a, and I want to tell you guys, the most amazing thing in all of this is um, last night as I was trying to edit everything and get everything up and I began to become very ill, um, it just, everything on my phone kept seizing, everything kept dumping, everything kept, oh, it was just crazy. Um, and I, I went in, I was cleaning off space. I was, you know, I just, I keep working at it diligently and I thought, you know, Lord, I have cleaned everything off. I'm still at 97% storage. Um, I've had SIM cards. I've done everything. What can I do? And so I just finished what I could. And then I got up this morning and, um, wasn't feeling great. Had kind of a, uh, one of those kind of backhanded compliment. Well, it wasn't even a backhanded compliment, um, <laughs> phone calls and you just get through it going, wow, that's, that's a bit much. But, um, but then I also got to talk to my granddaughters that were just beautiful and I also um, got to do, well, I got to talk to a lot of people. Ironically, very sweet people called today and or I had to call them back and that was a blessing. So, um, and then I looked at my phone and I went from almost 99% storage to 90. Guys, that's like, let's make four videos. I mean, it was crazy. So we'll see what I can get done. Um, tomorrow I begin packing and then Friday, and then we just kind of go from there. So um, I have most of the food ideas done. I just have to pack it. And so it's all good. It's all good. But um, pray for me. I'm having a hard time eating. And so um, that is going to be a struggle. I was already having a hard time. But um, I think that it'll be fine. And I just have to focus on high-protein food. And right now, that's my goal. So... My husband and I were talking about it that, you know, you've always had a hard time with certain, and I said, yeah, I know, I know. And, um, I know there have been times in my life where I was a big eater, but I just haven't been in any sense. You haven't been a big eater in a long, long time. And I said, I know, I know. So, um, and I have to, I'm working on my health. So guys, let's just pray. Let's ask God. It's all good. And we're just going to trust him now. That being said, many of you are also going through issues. If you guys need prayer, feel free to email me at josephinesdesigns.com um, or you can list it below so that we can pray for you as a community. Make sure that you don't say names. Make sure that you that it is appropriate. And Because um, if it's inappropriate, I probably won't post it, but I will gladly pray for you. So, um, just, you know, be aware of that. And so guys, those of you who are part of this camp, be sure that you are in prayer for everyone in this camp, that we are all, um, focused on our community and serving God and loving God and doing everything that we need to do that God has called us to. 
All right, guys, let's get started. It's such a good lesson. Okay, so um, I had chosen this lesson and written it a while back, and then today things kind of got um, added to it. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do, but let's let's start here at least. So today's lesson is God's promises to heal and mend. I know, isn't God's timing awesome? So um, God is here. And we need to read Luke 4, 16 through 21. Hang with me, guys. Luke 4, 16 through 21. All right. Um, I hope everybody is um, getting settled into your summers. It... It is, I, I don't, it just seems to take us forever to get settled into summer and then it's over. And I think for us, because we come off of a tax season that we've never had until the last maybe five years. And it just, I can't get my head around it. You know, I, spring for me was always about camping and going and doing and, and it's so changed for us. And, and I'm just really praying that this next year, um, we can just be done, that we can be a hundred percent done by March and we can be out of here because for me, um, I need that. How about you guys? And I need that to, for my health and, and all of that and to mend and to heal. That is such a big deal for me right now. What is it that is your quiet, happy place where God can reach your heart? Is it your war room, your prayer room? Is it a vacation? Is it sitting on a beach? Is it sitting in the mountains? Is it walking in your garden? So, um, yesterday for me, it was a lot of walking in the garden, no doubt. I mean, I was working in the gardens, but, um, I just want to say wherever that is, be sure that you seek God and ask him to heal your heart, heal your body, heal whatever is going on in your life and to show him, to show you his way. Okay. So hang with me. So we're going to read Luke 16, 4, 16 through 21. So he, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as the and as was the custom he entered the synagogue on the sabbath and stood up to read the scroll of the prophet isaiah was handed to him he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written isaiah 61 1 through 1 and 2 the spirit of the lord is upon me the messiah because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to announce release, pardon, forgiveness to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedies, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation of the favor of God abound greatly. And that's Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Then he rolled up the scroll, having stopped in the middle of the verse, gave it back to the attendant and sat down to teach. And the eyes of all those in the synagogue were attentively fixed on him. So one more verse. He began speaking to them. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your presence. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled. All right, our key verse for today is Psalms. So, um, and it is Psalms 147. Hang with me. I usually pre-mark these. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I literally, we were trying to work out some things today, and I usually am the one. And I mean, I did remember some things, and it was kind of like, hey, I'm not there yet. I'm still got this young brain. This is getting better, but it was kind of like, oh, man. So, and it was just lots of different things today. So, I just finally, I just now realized, I guess I just missed the point of marking my verses today. And I'm sorry, guys. All right. Psalms 147, 3. And he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. So, that's also tied to Psalms 34, 18, Isaiah 57, 15. Um, and then Isaiah 61, 1, and then Luke 4, 18. So, ironically, we read this, right? Okay. So, as we think about um, God, he heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. Wow. So, this is the New Amplified. I'm going to read it out of the NIV real quick for us. And it says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So, do you believe that? Do you believe that God binds up our wounds? 
have any of you been through a major, major medical thing where you just think, wow, hey, this is going to take forever to get healed. I'm just not going to get healed. This is not going to happen. Well, as I shared with you on day one, the night before, I hit this elbow and it was completely dented in. It's bruised. My hand is bruised. Um, and it, the dent is starting to like come back out. <laughs> But um, my daughter and I were talking about, that's just bone. There's nothing there but bone, bone and joint. I'm sure there's cartilage and whatnot, you know, in there. But it, it just was like, I've never had anything dent like that. Never had anything dent in like that. And it was just crazy. But God, so quickly, I mean, I, I had numbness and odd feeling in this part of my hand, which usually indicates there could be a break. Um, cause I've had lots of broken bones, but God over time began to reduce that, that, that feeling in my hand began cause I knew that would mean surgery. I knew I would be in, they would have to do surgery on my elbow, um, for how hard it was hit for all the noise that most made, et cetera. And by God's grace, it didn't have to happen. God took care of it. So it's amazing when God does things like that. Here's a story, and I hope this encourages you. Leslie and her two daughters were about to be evicted from their home, although, as, although Leslie believed that God would help so far he hadn't given a clue as to how. She wondered, where is God? As she drove to the courthouse, she prayed for God's intervention. Then she heard a song on the radio proclaiming, God is here. Let the brokenhearted rejoice. Could this be the answer from God that she was longing to hear? Inside the courtroom, Leslie um, Leslie stood before the judge, heard his decision, and signed the legal documents. But God still had not given her an answer. Can you imagine what it's like to lose your home? I mean, we've owned a home and had to sublet it out um, or lease it out because we couldn't afford to live there. And had we had to put it on a market to sell it, we could have never gotten it sold in time. Um, we didn't have anything to fall back on. And so I, I totally get this. My husband's been through four layoffs. And um, there have been some that have just been catastrophic layoffs. And, you know, God intervenes in ways that we just can't even understand. His logic is amazing. It is nothing compared to ours. His logic is amazing. So let's hear about Leslie and, and, her, and her two daughters. As Leslie was walking to her car, a truck pulled up beside her. Ma'am, said the driver, I heard your testimony inside the courtroom, and I believe God wants me to help you. And he did. Gary helped Leslie get in contact with a woman from a local church who was able to work with the parties involved to reverse the process so that she and her girls could stay in their home. Amen. <sighs> When people ask, where is God? He's right here. He's there. He hears everything that's going on. He provides a way. Sometimes we just think, no, well, what if it were just this? This would be the logical thing. Instead of having to go through all this drama, but God needs the testimony sometimes of the drama in our life. He needs people to see him miraculously intervene. And that's a very important part about today's lesson. Christians like Gary are continuing to work Jesus, the, continuing, continuing the work Jesus started, healing the brokenhearted and binding up their wounds from Psalms 147.3. It's so important. Again, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Do you believe that? All right. I have two more verses I'd like for us to go through. John 14.12. Hang with me. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'll try to have them marked tomorrow. My apologies. Um, it is amazing to me how God works. It's one of those things in life where we go through it and we just think, wow, is this really what you planned? And a lot of times it is. Okay, let me read to you John 14, 12. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior, believing in Jesus as Savior, will also do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these in extent and outreach because I am going to the Father. 
So recognize right now, God can use you to encourage someone else. Are you available to help God in whatever he's calling you to do, to help in the situation that he has you in? Or are you like, God, why didn't you fix it? Or are you the Gary when God says, go help that person? Do you go? Do you go? It is huge. It is huge to obey God. It is huge to serve. It is huge to to serve others in Jesus' name. Okay, let's read John 4, 37. I hope you guys have your Bible and you're opening your Bible because it is just too rich today to not be going through the scripture with me. All right, so God really laid on my heart these last two verses, so hang with me. Okay, John 4, 37. I knew I was a page short. Okay, for in this case, the saying is true, one person sows and another reaps. Gary sowed, Leslie reaped. Leslie obeyed God, trusted him. Leslie reaped. Her girls reaped. Gary was obedient and went and helped this family save their home. There is no way God did not bless Gary for that action. So in all of these scenarios, we get to see where God worked in so many lives. So when we go through difficulties, when we go through difficult days, do we understand that God is using this in our lives and others? It is huge. One sows, another reaps. We must hold on to that fact from day one. We must trust that that is God at work. And we must understand that God's logic is totally different from your or my logic. I am so thankful that I am not writing God's word. Because guess what? I would totally mess it up. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like that you could do a better job? I probably think not. But we need to stand firm on the word of God. We need to trust God. We need to step out in faith. And we need to love God and love others. Those are the two greatest commandments Jesus gave us. All the commandments count. But when Jesus was asked, what is the greatest of these commandments? He said, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. It is huge. If we get that in our mind, when these things come up, I literally woke up this morning and thought, oh my goodness gracious, oh Lord, how do I do this? How? And I mean, I had to even make a video call with my grandchildren and I thought I just look horrible I mean I had no clue how bad I looked because I had gone back to sleep I felt so badly and right now I feel just completely tuckered out but God had a plan for this to happen today he knew that today was the day if I was going to feel bad um, this would be the day because tomorrow I have too much to do I have to get all these things ready for our trip so I wanted to cover one more thing, and I love this, and I hope you guys can understand. Um, I want to read to you um, Lamentations. So there's fresh blessings every day, new every morning. So last night, I thought there is no way I can make it today, but God had a plan. So hear this. This is from Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. I'm throwing this in extra. This is the bonus round, my friends. God's compassions never fail. They are new every morning. You know, when I talk about, have you ever had to have surgery and you just think my body can't heal from this? Or have you had an injury so badly, you just don't know if, even if they rebuilt it, could you recover? I mean, I've had my hand redone. I've had endless things in my body worked on. And it is a miracle. It is a miracle when God heals our body. Um, it just, it just amazed me. I remember when they took out my left ovary, I was pregnant with our first daughter and they cut me from hip to hip so that they could check the other ovary being concerned that I was, that I had cancer all throughout my, uh, my ovaries, my uterus, everything by God's grace. I did not, I did not have cancer and the other ovary looked very healthy. Praise God. And I remember in the healing process, cause I was awake during that surgery. I chose to have an epidural because it was the best thing for the baby. It was a very terrible process getting that epidural, but by God's grace, they were able to do it. And um, because the surgeon was a family friend and she was like, that's it. I'm putting you, we're going to give you a 
saddle block and I said, is it as good for the baby? No, then forget it. Just get it done. You know, I had to look at the anesthesiologist and say, get it done. I had a hard time because I'd had so many, been in so many car wrecks and my back was very crooked. It was hard to get the needle in. And, um, and by God's grace, he got it in. Um, about 30, 45 minutes later, we were finished, but it was kind of crazy. And it wasn't a complete block either, like a lot of times we have with epidurals. Anybody who's ever had that during labor and delivery, I've had that as well. So, but by God's grace, it got done. And then there was this massive incision from hip to hip. The scar is from left to right hip. And I think about, you know, my husband, I remember he was just fascinated, like, how can your body heal from this? How do you, how does your body heal from this? This is so deep. This is so much, you know, that you've been cut into and, you know, just completely gutted open like a fish. You know what I mean? And it was amazing to see God heal my body. It was shocking. And then on top of that, to be pregnant across, you know, the, my belly was good. And then I had to be pregnant on top of that. And that I was able to continue to grow and be okay in the pregnancy. Um, it was just a miraculous hand of God that took care of that. And I'm sorry if this has grossed you out. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Um, I'm sorry. I live with a guy who fishes. Gutting like a fish is a common term here. And I apologize. But, and we're getting, he's getting ready to go fishing this weekend. So he's all excited. But um, let me keep going because this is such, such, such an important thing. Whatever you're facing, know that God is faithful every morning. He renews our strength day by day and gives us hope. Literally last night, all I could think of is I was, you know, ill all throughout the night thinking, how can I do this today? Oh God, please, what am I going to do? And please God, help me, you know, not get sick in bed. Help me be able to, you know, I was just so ill, guys. I was so ill. And remember, you know, three months ago, I couldn't have even stood up got my balance, walked in the dark, and made it to the ladies' room. I, but by God's grace, the timing of this, again, is even that is amazing. I could get up, stand, and walk. And I was trying to, to I have a, several shoes in my closet that I haven't been able to wear. They were brand new, and I've been trying to wear them because I'm still having really bad problems with one of my toes, guys. And um, I meant to call and get another appointment today. Um so I was trying to change my shoes up, hoping that it would help. It looks like it might be helping, but it doesn't help my knee. So it makes it even harder for me to get my balance. Um, but, I mean, I can tell you right now that I did okay. I didn't stumble. I didn't wobble. I didn't fall. I made it. God is good. So let me keep going. And sometimes, as with family, um, he brings relief. So if you're going through things within your family, he brings relief as you're going through things individually. He brings relief in our health. I mean, literally three months ago, I was like, Lord, either heal me or take me home. I just can't do it anymore. I was sick all the time. I was having brain fog. I mean, extreme brain fog. I was in so much pain from head to toe. I was living on prescription ibuprofen. Um, I, plus you top that with some Tylenol. I was living on both. It, it was just a lot. Um, I am thankful after so many years of being on medication that God intervened. God intervened. I am, I still have a very, very damaged knee. Um, I'm asking God daily to heal and restore that knee. Um, I can live with bones first. Just put the cartilage back, please, God. But I submit to his will. I submit to his ways. I lay it at his feet and I ask him to please, God, just let me wake up tomorrow and let it be a fresh new morning. And let me be able to focus on you and help me to know what to do next. So when our souls are downcast within us, we may call to mind the promises of God that what his mercies are new every morning. And that is such a big part of understanding who God is, what his plan is for us, that he cares about every hair on your head. I was talking to my husband today that um, we've been researching an appliance. I've been researching it and I knew we found one last Sunday and he said no and it was dirt cheap at Walmart 
it was a boo-boo, it wasn't in their inventory, and he said no. And it has our price, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an appliance that they're getting ready to update, it's going to cost double, and um, it is something that I need in order to be able to get my protein in every day. I'm, I'm, um, I know that if I don't eat enough protein, I will lose hair. I've had this happen before. And, um, it was one reason I went ahead and cut my hair short. Um, I recognize, I mean, I cut my hair short for a lot of reasons. I was trying a new leaf. I was, you know, trying to, you know, refocus the new year and, um, you know, do anything to make it easier for me to get ready. I mean, I cut off almost, uh, well, total of about 20 inches within a couple of three months. So it was really crazy. And I mean, my hair was to my waist and, um, and now, you know, I can still wear it in a ponytail now, but, um, it's just crazy. And so I was looking at what can I do to stay healthy, to be healthy. And what I'm doing, I'm adding something in that is not necessarily how I started out, but finally my friend who's a health coach finally said, you're, you're going to have to add something in. And, um, and last night before I got sick, I added in a high protein shake and it was fine. It was probably what helped me not dehydrate. It was all good, but it was one of those things where I thought later, Oh, oh that was probably not my best, my best move. But the amazing thing was my husband came up, we had been discussing, he, um, he knew he brought me some flowers yesterday, very sweetly on his way home from work. And he was just like, I'm so sorry. Cause he went to Walmart to go pick it up with my daughter and it was gone and he brought me flowers. It was so sweet. And he just looked at me and said, I'm so sorry. I'm, I don't know what to say. And I said, you're going to have to trust me when I'm telling you, I've been researching this for months. You're going to have to trust me in your mind. It's illogical. You're going to have to trust that I've done my homework, that I know what is in front of us, that I know that this is a last chance opportunity. That's what God's telling us right now. We have to trust him. He has a plan. We may be broken. We may be tired. We may be, you know, in a bad situation financially. We may be in one of those places. Just as my husband was struggling to trust me, we struggle to trust God. And we, and I am not God. Let me just say this example between my husband and I has nothing to do with that. I'm just giving you a, a visual example um, a word picture, so to speak, of what was going on. And I mean, he is literally today, we finally ordered one off of Amazon. We had to buy a scratch and dented. We had to go with not God's perfect plan, but the backup plan. Now, I mean, I have no problems buying a returned appliance. I do not at all. Um, it, it cost us almost $40 more, maybe $30 more. Um, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm praying it'll get here, you know, early Friday morning um, before we have to take off because I would love to take it. And, you know, and even as I got sick last night, my husband looked at me and I said, right now, that appliance would help me so much. And I can't go through the summer with um, complete electrolyte depletion. I can't, you know, with lack of protein, et cetera, because when I get hot and overheated, and guys, I like it hot. But when I get as overheated as I did yesterday, um, I, I can't afford that kind now because the electrolytes, the type of diet I'm on. So I was drinking electrolytes all afternoon. I really was fastidious. I paid attention. I'm drinking them here. Um, I have the other half. I'm going, I just did half of the package and I, you know, I'm trying to be cost effective here, but, um, we have to know that God had a plan in that situation and because we didn't listen, or somebody didn't listen, we had to go to plan B. Don't go to plan B. In your walk with the Lord, trust him. Even if you were Leslie losing your house, he had a Gary in mind to help step in and a woman who could help work with the companies. Um, even if, you know, I had surgery, it was the last thing I wanted to do after we prayed for this child for so long, being told we could never have children. Can you imagine what that reaction was like? We were absolutely flabbergasted. We had to trust God that he had a plan to get her here. By God's amazing grace, 
she not only survived, I mean, she not only was conceived or was created and she not only survived, she survived without birth defects, which is what they um, later told me they expected. Um, it was, I will never forget when we went to see the doctor after surgery and the doctor was like, oh my goodness, this baby grew. They never intended for her to grow for a month after surgery. That was just where we were at that time and what God was teaching us. So God had a perfect plan. If it had been left up to me, we wouldn't have that done, but we wouldn't have had surgery, but it was there. Just like trying that anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist struggling to get that epidural in, there was the perfect plan. Had I thrown the towel in and said, okay, let's go for something easier. Literally, by the time I delivered her, the, anesthesi the new anesthesiologist said I had six inches of tracks on my back from that day. You know what? It was minimal to me. I, you know, yes, it hurt. Yes, it wasn't fun. Do I want to do it again? Absolutely not. Now I know really probably how dangerous that was, but I, I, at this point in my life, knew that I trusted God. He had put a path before me and I had to step out on faith and obey that. Um, God plans to heal and to mend. That is a promise from him. God also gives us fresh blessings each new day, each new morning. You must hold on to those two promises from God. You must trust him. You must step out on faith. Um, and we all, two steps forward, three steps back. Do not quit. Do not quit. One thing I have really um, been amazed by in this, you know, health journey I'm on community, um, everybody missteps. It's what you do right after. Do you spend the rest of the night misstepping, the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of the month? Or do you stop and listen? And seek God and ask him to change that. I'm going to tell you lately, I've had a couple of days where it did not work that way. Um, and I'm dealing with some old wounds and I can tell they're, they're playing out. But God's using that. And I know that. I know that he's using that in my life and others' lives. Because there needs to be healing. And sometimes those wounds are really deep. And they don't get cut until you just are in... It's like the worst possible day. And then those wounds get reopened and you hurt worse sometimes than you did the first time. But we have to trust God to heal and to mend. We have to sometimes step out and work at that process. But we must obey him. We must seek him. We must stop, look, and listen. We must um, be quick to, uh, quick to listen, slow to anger, slow to speak. And that's not always easy. So I kind of took a, saying that we teach our kids and a scripture. You know, I like that stop, look, and listen thing. You know, before you cross the street, before you step out and say anything, before you do anything, we need to stop, look, and listen. I'd add pray. All right, friends, let's pray. I'm gonna let you guys go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for your promises, the promises in your word. Lord, we thank you so much for sending Jesus. In him, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we are so blessed to get to know him and then to know you as a result because of Jesus. Lord, um, we are honored and blessed. And we thank you, God, for what you're teaching us in this camp. Jesus, because of the sacrifices you've made, you have made it possible for us not only to read the word, but to know you. And the Holy Spirit allows us to have that relationship with God. And because you, Jesus, provided the way, the truth, and the life to the Father, that veil was ripped in the Holy of Holies, and we have direct access. We can pray, we can seek you, and we can seek the Father. Thank you, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, for all that you are doing in our lives. Lord, as we step out from this lesson, help us to understand what it is that we are to do with what you're teaching in our hearts right now. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, um, I will be back with a Bible journaling, probably either 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, just depending on how much I can get done. And I apologize for the beeping. Um, they weren't supposed to come in, but I think somebody need to make a little um, quick break real quick, and then we'll go back out. So my husband and daughter are painting in our mini house today. 
please pray that they can get this paint done quickly because we have a mattress coming. It is even going to be delivered to us. It's a, a second hand, but we're very thankful and um, it'll be going out there and we are just needing as many financial breaks as we can get. So that is such a blessing. We will, we know the family that is coming from and we are honored and we are blessed. So, all right, friends, um, I pray your day is blessed, creative and lovely. Please like and subscribe. It is free to you. It helps the channel to become up more in the YouTube um, algorithm and for more people to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, also, leave a comment. That helps as well. And one of you sweet friends out there is just being amazing. And I so appreciate your messages. Every single time I look for you now and I just want to say thank you. You are a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. You encourage my heart beyond all words. So thank you. Your, your messages, you get prayed for your, your comments. Um, you, um, you get prayed for and just know that God is blessing my heart and blessing others with what you're sharing. So thank you so much. So please don't be shy. Join in. We love you guys. All right, friends. Um, I'll be talking to you soon. Oh, share this with anyone. If it might encourage them, I'll be talking to you soon. I love you, but more than that, that is so much more important. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He, he died on that cross for you and then rose again. And he did that. He paid the price for your sin, for my sin, because he loves each one of us individually. So trust him. Keep serving him well. All right, friends. I love you.